President Muhammad Buhari signs yet another revised 2020 budget. And in Andoste, the state chief judge refuses the request of the State House of Assembly. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeidi. President Muhammadu Buhari has signed a revised 2020 budget of 10.8 trillion naira into law. The president explained that the budget had to be revised because of the effect of coronavirus on the nation's economy. He also stated that ministries, departments and agencies will be given 50% of their capital allocation by the end of the month. Joining us to throw more light on this budget is an economist. Paul Alaji. Good evening, Mr. Paul Alaji. Yeah, good evening, and thank you so very much for Yes, this is Plus Politics. Don't get it twisted. But we are going to be discussing politics and economy, so to say. Now, the 2020 revised budget has now been signed, and uh, the president acknowledged that this is definitely caused by all, and we all know what actually led to this. So has the government really taken care of those factors which has to do with COVID in this signed budget now? Well, well thank you so very much. Um, last month, National Assembly at 10.81 Okay, uh, we understand uh, we're still trying to sort that out. Uh, we have another person joining us now. We hope that this network will be much better gd ojo a public affairs analyst talking with us on the issue of budget mr gd ojo good evening thanks for having me good evening let me just quickly go straight to the point we've we've lost quite a lot of time uh trying to sort out this network issue uh year in year out we hear political analysts we hear public affairs analysts we hear economies talking about that our budget is not development driven, that as long as we have um, less than 50% on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, capital projects, we are going nowhere. Uh, is there any sign that uh, Nigeria can come out now that the situation is even worse with the issue of COVID? Uh, but in terms of the inquiry, it's done better than it's predicted. Now we are having about uh, capital budget to and current. And it's a challenge trying to bring the balance back because it was. Uh, Okay, um, or wh while we're looking at that, I'm, I'm going to be reading out some figures for you while we'll um, uh, get your comment on these. Looking at the assessment of the budget spent so far from January to May, we have um, 1.25 trillion on debt service. We also have 1.32 trillion spent on personnel costs, including you know, pensions, start talking about the issue of recurring. It's been more of uh, taking care of the personnel, and this personnel includes the politicians, it includes the debt servicing, and we are now talking about just 253 billion spent on capital. 253 billion spent on capital. This is quite low to whatever has been spent on recurrent, whatever has been spent on personnel. And this question comes again, the cost of governance, the cost of maintaining public office orders. And uh, it, it begs to ask again that when can we listen to the voice of reasoning where we need to cut down the cost of governance of our public office holders? Very apt question, my brother. Um, the, the issue is, yes, but this order we may need to put down the um, allowances and the okay. uh, secretary of government should look at the 
Mr. Gideon Ojo, of, um, um, I'm so sorry that yes. uh, um, uh, quite a lot of uh, we're getting this feedback that the network is quite unfriendly. We'll quickly take a short break again and we will listen to you via phone. We are going to call your line now so that we can make sense because I can hear a bit of it, but I understand that some of our viewers need to hear you more clearly. Uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be back with you in a moment. So it's still Plus Politics, and we are discussing the 2020 revised budget that was signed by President Muhammad Buhari. And back to you, Gideo Joe. You were just reacting to some of the questions that we mentioned. Let's believe that a good number of our viewers were not able to hear you clearly. Can you recap some of the things you said? Uh, thank you. What I said was that, you see, it's utopian to say that, yes, we can achieve uh, balanced budget where we have 50% recurrent and 50% uh, capital. For a non federal economy like Nigeria, that, that may be a bit speakish because every year you have additional ministries, department agencies being established. You also have issues of wage increase to deal with. Just last year, the wages and salaries of uh, uh, labor union or workers was increased by 30 percent. That has to go to the budget, and that has substantially increased the running cost or the what is called the current expenditure. But I did say that in terms of overhead, uh, you also look at the budget. You read out some figures. Look at the amount we are using for debt servicing. That's almost at par with our capital project uh, envelope. And that is very, very disturbed. That's appalling. That is worrisome. That is outstanding. And that's why, you know, as the federal government continues to borrow in this 2020, uh, the price, uh, the, the cost of uh, servicing, that servicing in 2021 budget may actually be uh, increased by 50% compared to what we are I am not for debt servicing in 2020 because uh, the more you borrow, as it is said in English, ill goes are borrowing, goes are sorrowing. And the fact that we are now relying on external and internal borrow has not really helped matter. Having said that, we also do have a budget of our that are, to my own mind, frivolous and uh, or, or salutary. Uh, before the, the new budget that was signed today, uh, we have almost uh, is three billion voted for year travel, for travels of the president and the vice president. That is huge. And I think that also must have been considerably reduced. We also see our government sponsoring pilgrimages, conferences, and all of that. We can reduce that substantially to reduce cost of governance. But um, I, I want to give the president benefit of doubt that the Oron Sayer report that he has asked that the Secretary of the Federal Government, Minister, Minister of Finance, and a couple of them should look at how to implement the 10% recommendation left of Oron Sayer report. Let's see whether that will bring about the reduction in the duties of the Federal Government uh, compared to where we currently are. But yes, I agree with you. It's very good that we reduce our running costs, our, our uh, running costs, and increase exponentially our capital project. I, I, I just want to quickly remind you, I'm sure you also recall, when one of the you know, former Senate leader, uh, Ndume, made a suggestion, and uh, it was almost eating raw, talking about cutting the cost, that not just the politician should suffer this issue, that some top public officers should also have a bite of this, I mean, this uh, pandemic. So I I'm looking at it, how practicable this is, because the budget here is already affected. The January, December that we're rushing out, they even mentioned that by September they will come up with a budget. So as that loss is interest, that's number one question in terms of the January, December calendar, has he, has he been able to achieve his effect? I mean, the, the essence of that. And two, 
what more can we do to reduce these recurring? Okay, um, let's go back to the argument of the structure. Um, sometimes last year, the uh, Dr. Carl the uh, Senator, uh, Rutgers of Florida, and a host of others actually noted the ideas of what we need to do to substantially reduce cost of governance. And um, by extension, the recurrent expenditure of our budget. Now, we have former senior members of the National Assembly. And the suggestion was made that can we have one senator per state, okay. or maybe at most two, rather than three, and also reduce substantially the number of uh, members of House of Wales to my volume of 200 rather than 360. You see, if me, Mauritania, Senegal has done this to it. If a Senegal in 2011 removed or uh, uh, removed their Senate and have only unicameral legislation, that in a sense is one way we can reduce our recurrent expenditure. But if you go to the executive arm, look at the number of cabinet ministers we have. Constitutional speaking, section 147 of the constitution actually said the president should appoint a minister from each state. Each state. Why did we come about 43 cabinet members? When we could actually have 36, and we will not be offending the constitution. And even the 36 is too large. I recall that in the US, there are only 15 or there about secretaries of state that are in charge of each of the key ministries. If America with a population of over 250 million, we have only 15 ministers and have only 100 members of Senate. Senate. Why is Nigeria less endowed uh, with less capital per capita income be polluting with 360 members of us of them, 109 members of Senate, and 43 members of cabinet. These are great fights. We can actually substantially reduce the number of ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as the National Assembly, and then we'll be able to draw down or reduce considerably okay. the running cost of Gio, Gio, let be, I, I, I'm really pressed for time. No thanks to the technology, I mean, the technical each we've been having. But I want to drive on this point just for record. Now, you've cited something very practical. We have the one we copy, the American type of democracy, where we have two senators from each state and we have 100 senators. And in our own case, we have uh, 109 senators from a non lesser number of states. So we are looking at the MTEF now, and that's the medium term expenditure framework. Is there a way we could look at this? Because if you say this is achievable this year, you and I know that that's not realistic. How soon? Can we, you know, rejig our constitution to face this reality? Because governance, it is obvious that it is very attractive. I agree with you, my brother. The issue is the political will. Is there a political will on the part of the president to go this route? I mean, there's nothing circumstantial about our constitution. We are back for an autonomous, uh, people-driven constitution. But the administration of uh, President Norman Bright doesn't seem to want to hear anything about the structure. And yet, the structure will save this country, will promote merit meritocracy, will also help to reduce the cost of governance. We don't need that six states. We can reduce the number of states. But even if we let it be, we can reduce the number of local government. Even if we let it be, we can reduce the number of ministries, departments, and agencies both at the federal and state level, as well as the parliament. But the political will must be on the side of the political actors and the abusers, starting with the president and the leadership of national government, to want to promote an expeditionary deal with a constitutional or or amendment that will bring this to bear. Otherwise, we will continue to, to, to cry under the everybody 
of uh, this current expenditure, and we have less resources for capital development. And the way to go for every serious country is through the capital development to fix the infrastructure. Look at this uh, sustainable development goal. We are just 10 years away from the year 2030. That they have not achieved any of the 17 the sustainable development goals. And if we are not very careful, we will still not achieve 10 years to come. So the best thing is to look at the clamor for the restructuring of the country and do something that is safe, that can bring about win win for both the politicians and the people of Nigeria. But uh, the way we are now, governance is too bloated. We are having every recurrent and overhead. And unless we reduce this substantially, uh, Nigeria may never really get to the end of the we all look for. Thank you so much, Gide Ojo. Thank you for your time. And probably I, I must add this, that uh, for those people who believe that people will lose their jobs, for those who believe that we have less number of politicians, it's going to be loss of jobs. What we're saying is if we devote more money into capital, we have good infrastructure, there will be better economy, there will be better infrastructure, there will be things that will create more jobs for people rather than the few, you know, fattening on the huge number of us. Uh, so thank you so much. I wish we can have this conversation much longer, but our time is fast spent. I want to say thank you to you, and thank you to our guests who we're not able to have for today. I'm talking about Paul, Elijah, an economist who really created time to be with us today. Uh, trust me, we will create some time to talk more on this issue and some other important issues. We'll take a short break, and when we return, the situation in Ondo State gets more interesting as the chief judge rejects the demands of the State House of Assembly. We'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere.